proudly we hail. Hello from Hollywood. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to another performance of your War Department program, Proudly We Hail. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we present Mr. Barry Sullivan as the star of our play, One for the Records, written by Richard Hall with music by Eddie Skrivanek. <laughs> It happened quickly, the car traveling a little too fast. The intersection, the screech of brakes, and then... Five weeks after the accident in which his wife was seriously injured, Don Harrington, the radio producer, sits at her bedside in the darkened hospital room. Feeling better? Oh, much, much better. Well, my darling, you know what day tomorrow is? I haven't the slightest idea. I mean, you tell me about it. Tomorrow is October 14th, a very remarkable day. For on that day, four years ago, two people met in London. Mm. Wimpole Street, if you care to be precise, right in front of the Barrett House. Go on. It sounds wonderful. Well, at that time, he was a rising young actor in the repertory theater. Fourth spear from the left in Henry VIII. <laughs> and she, on that morning they met, she was a vision. And he beheld her, and he was entranced. And they spoke of the Brownings, and they decided that Robert and Elizabeth would be wonderful names for children. The afternoon grew into evening, and the evening into starlight, and the starlight... Starlight grew into a promise they've shared together ever since. Oh, that was a beautiful speech, Don. You know, you really should never have given up acting to become a radio producer. Yes, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Oh, but my darling, we have so much to be thankful for. Oh, yes, Don. So much. And you know what? Dr. Reynolds says that in a few days we're going to unzip that cast and throw it away. Oh, I'm glad. But I'm a little frightened, too. I've, I've almost forgotten what you look like. Well, I'll tell you, Betty. I still have arms that long to hold you and a stomach that gets butterflies every time I realize that you'll soon be home. And I have eyes that get stars in them whenever I think of you. Oh, my darling. Sorry. Visiting hours are over. That woman never misses her cue, does she? Well, my darling, I'll have to run along. I'll see you tomorrow. Oh, don't be late, will you, Don? Seems like I almost live each day for the ten minutes we have together. I won't be. See you tomorrow, darling. Rest well. Oh, Dr. Reynolds. Oh, hello, Don. How's our patient? Oh, she's wonderful, Doctor. I just told her about the cast. But, uh... About her eyes, Doctor. Oh, the darkened room and the coverings over her eyes were just a precaution, Don. Oh. We'll pull the blinkers off when we remove the cast. Does that make you happy? Oh, perfectly, Doctor. Mm. Thanks to you. Well, Don, I really don't deserve all the credit. Your wife's recovery has been remarkable. You're good medicine for her. Hey, by the way, what's the overcoat for? Oh, oh, I'm driving up to Great Pines tonight, up in the high, cold country. Well, you better take your earmuffs along, too. Say, that's a thought. We're planning a broadcast up there. I have to check the facilities. Oh, say, Doctor, I didn't mention Great Pines to Mrs. Harrington. No? No, the mountain roads are pretty icy this time of year, and, well, I've so often urged that she use all her energies toward getting well, I, I didn't want her to worry, not even for a minute. Yes, well, all right, Don. Uh, you'll be back tomorrow night? Tomorrow night. So long, Doctor. So long, Don. Uh, we're all set, Mr. Harrington? All set, Barry. Well, how's Mrs. Harrington? I'll have Mrs. Harrington home soon, thank you, Barry. Now let's get this trip to Great Pines over with. <laughs> Well, that wasn't too bad, eh, Barry? No, sir. We didn't even have to use change. Hey, listen to that wind, will you? Yeah, it looks like it's blowing up a storm. Think so? Hmm. Well, let's get into the hotel and get our work over with as quickly as we can in the morning and get down off this hill. Hey, listen to that wind. This is WGP, the Great Pine Station, highest radio station in the world. Attention, motorists approaching Great Pine. You're cautioned to put on chains at the divide. We repeat... All motorists. Hey, it really must have snowed here last night. Well, Barry, you happy with everything here? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Harrington. The uh, studio is small, but I think we can get by nicely. All right, fine. Now, why don't you go get the car and we'll roll out of here. 
You've got the chains? Yeah, they're putting them on right now. Good. Gas up and hurry back. Hello? A Los Angeles call, Mr. Harrington. One moment. Hello. Hello, Don. Yes? Dr. Reynolds, Don. I had a chance to call to the station hoping I'd get you. Why, yes, Doctor, but I... Don, I don't want to alarm you, but Mrs. Harrington had a little setback last night. Yes, Doctor? I think it'd be best if you returned as soon as you can. I'm leaving at once. Uh, Mr. Harrington, it isn't serious, Doctor. Oh, no, 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 I don't think so. But you've been so close to her all through her trouble, I know how much that means to her. I'm leaving this very minute, Doctor, this very minute. I'm afraid we're not going anywhere. And what's that? Well, the highway department is stopping all cars. Looks like we're snowed in, Mr. Harrington. <laughs> We will return to our play in just a moment, but first, a message from your War Department. Can you tell what a man is just by the clothing he wears? If he's in the uniform of the United States Army, you know that he's not only a soldier, but a man of science. Yes, that is our regular army today, a group of technically trained and skilled men who are every day pushing the growth of scientific progress to heights of accomplishment believed impossible only a few years ago. You've all heard of atomic energy and the infinite possibilities of its utilization. You've all heard of jet propulsion, electronics, the development of which in years to come will play an important part in your everyday life. Machines which hurtle through space at inconceivable speeds faster than that of sound. Radar, which is already being used to accurately forecast weather and push button airplanes. These and many more are the accomplishments of the Army today. So you see, this is the type of work your regular army soldier is doing. A man in the uniform of that army has selected a career of advancement, both personal and scientific. Besides training himself in a particular branch of knowledge, he is a part of a great organization whose contributions to science are an integral part of civilization. See your local army recruiting station now for further information. Here's the second act of One for the Record, starring Barry Sullivan as Don Harrington. Snowed in at Great Pines, unable to get the bedside of his injured wife, radio producer Don Harrington puts in a frantic phone call to Dr. Reynolds. His assistant, Barry, stands anxiously beside him. No answer yet, Mr. Harrington? No, oh, nothing. How is it outside? Well, it stopped snowing. The sun's even come out. That may be the break we've been waiting for. If we can't drive down the canyon, we'll fly down. They say they can get those little hedgehopper planes in anywhere. And if anyone can get one of them up to us, Dr. Reynolds can. Here's Dr. Reynolds, Mr. Oh. Harrington. Hello. Hello, thank you, Don. Dr. Reynolds, thank the Lord. I was afraid I wasn't going to be able to get through to you. Doctor, I'm snowed in up here. There's nothing going down the canyon. How's my wife? Well, I'm afraid it's a little more serious than I thought, Don. Uh, there's no possible way for you to get through? Well, there's a chance, Doctor. If you'll help me, if you'll just... Hello. Hello, Doctor. Doctor. Hello, Dr. Reynolds. Been cut off. Don't tell me the telephone lines are down. Your attention, please. Your attention, please. This is WGP, the Great Pine Station. We're interrupting our regular scheduled broadcast for this urgent announcement. Anyone now listening to WGP in the metropolitan area, please contact Dr. Frederick Reynolds at Holmby Hospital immediately. Have Dr. Reynolds listen to WGP at 3 o'clock this afternoon. This is urgent. We repeat, anyone now listening to WGP in the Metropolitan They've just made the announcement at WGP, Mr. Harrington. Oh, that's good. That'll get the plane up here. Dr. Reynolds will tell him how important it is. I've got to get through to her somehow, Barry. I've got to get to the hospital. <laughs> your husband, Mrs. Harrington. Oh, Don. Shh, Betty. Please, now. You aren't supposed to talk. Please listen to me. I, I want you to be very quiet. I want you to know how close I am to you. Think of London and the wonderful summer we spent there, and Wimple Street, and these words written there by another who loved almost as deeply as I love you. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. 
I love thee to the depth and breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight. For the ends of being an ideal grace. I love thee to the level of every day's most quiet need by sun and candlelight. I love thee freely as men strive for right. I love thee purely as they turn from praise. I love thee with a passion put to use in my old griefs and with my childhood's faith. I love thee with a love I seem to lose with my lost saints. I love thee with the breath, smiles, tears of all my life. And if God choose, I shall but love thee better after death. Oh, Don. Come now, Don. I think your wife should rest. Dr. Reynolds, there's a telephone call for you from Great Pines. Thank you. Uh, hello, Don. Hello, Dr. Reynolds. How is she, Doctor? Don, you're still the best medicine in the world for your wife. She's resting comfortably. Oh, that's wonderful, Doctor. Everything work out? Just as you planned it, Don. Of course, I couldn't get the plane, but I followed your directions on the other to the letter. Uh -huh. We recorded the broadcast, played the record in the room. It turned the trick. Quite a production, Don. Yes, wasn't it? But right now, Doctor, I'm going to trade the earphones for earmuffs. I've got a date with a snowplow, and it's bringing me home. The curtain falls on One for the Record, starring Barry Sullivan. Before leaving you, here's an important message from your War Department. Though the war is over, there is still much urgent and necessary work for our Army to do today. As always, the Army is continuing research and development in scientific fields, medicine, electronics, atomics, engineering, aviation. Our Army is an organization of technically educated men skilled in the various tasks for which they are trained. Recently, Air Force technicians completed a cooperative study of cosmic rays in the most extensive series of experiments ever made in the upper air regions. Just as recently, they disclosed the production of GAPA, a pilotless projectile, the principle of which should have far-reaching effects on the design of future passenger and cargo aircraft. The use of penicillin, DDT, new surgery methods, the adapting of radar techniques to forecast weather, perfecting of machines that fly faster than the speed of sound, the development of ENIAC, a machine that makes split-second scientific calculations that ordinarily would require thousands of man-hours to complete. These are but the forerunners of almost unbelievable Army accomplishments to come. To an ambitious young man interested in modern progress and development, an Army career offers any number of opportunities for individual advancement. He can partake of many personal benefits from this career, such as education, liberal retirement privileges, a chance to travel, the opportunity to learn a trade or skill, use of Army facilities and conveniences at reduced rates, frequent promotions. An unprecedented new pay scale offers him a financial return well above the starting average in industry. These are but a few of the inducements for an intelligent young man to choose a career in our new regular Army. If you're a young man between 17 and 34, Go to your nearest Army recruiting station and ask about the benefits to you of a worthwhile career in our new regular Army. Thank you, Mr. Barry Sullivan, for appearing on our show. This is C.P. McGregor reminding you that another Proudly We Hail program will come to you over this station next week. Listen in.